going on? Uh, nothing much. Just the world coming to an end and that's it. <laughs> you hear me, Bobby? I can hear you fine. How's it going? What's up, man? You tired or what? Well, fuck yeah, motherfucker. It's 11 <laughs> over here. <laughs> it's 11 where Alex and is I'll at, too. And I was cutting the yard. Yeah, but I was cutting the yard all day. Jesus Christ, man. I forgot. You're Texican. You guys, you guys, Texas. yeah, you guys, you guys work hard. We just lay on the fucking beach all day. Bro. Yeah, you <sighs> fuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is Alex Fernandez, uh, stand-up comedian del DF. Hey, Mexico, guys. Okay. Mexico City. Hello, man. Bobby Pulido. You guys heard of him? He's a singer, songwriter. Of course. A lover. Donkey Dick. What was it? Ooh, nice. big, big, big Dick Texan. <laughs> yeah, that was so hilarious. And then that's Jose. <laughs> that shit was funny, Jose? bro. It caught me off surprise. I was like, why would this guy have an email as Big Dick Sexy? <laughs> big Dick, big dick Sexy at uh, at and And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you why it made me laugh because I heard a rumor <laughs> that you showed your dick on a TV show once. Is that true? Once. Is no, that true? man. Just once. I didn't like I, I just I didn't show my dick. I just absolutely showed that it wasn't a sock. Mm. <laughs> so the chicks were so they were dogging you. They were saying you got a sock there in your pants. Sock in the crotch. That's what they thought. Yeah. You, you were just showing the texture, right? Just the texture. No. no. So yeah, man. Like that's it. That's valid, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just gentlemen. So what I, do on, stuff. All right. what I do, what I what I do on this show, like on my podcast, is I try to, sh I try to uh, demonstrate to people that there's more to artists than just being the artist, right? There's more to Bobby Pulido than just being a singer, and there's right. more to Alex Fernandez than just being a comedian, you know, or you know myself. You're a singer too, you know. No, no. Are you a singer, Alex? Do you sing no, too? No, no, not karaoke. Really. Karaoke. 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 I, I, maybe if, if I if I was as talented as the other Alex, I would be uh, maybe in Los Angeles. I don't know. Alejandro Fernandez. The other Alejandro Fernandez. Yeah. That's it, yeah. What's your what, what's everybody's go to karaoke song? Uh, here in Mexico, uh, a lot of crazy shit. There, there's a there's this song called um, I don't even know what its name is, but but, but you should. You should have listened to it. It goes like, <laughs> uh, it's called, oh. <laughs> Okay. So oh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, big boy, or what's the name? Big boy. Yeah, it's big boy, right. So it goes really slow and then it goes crazy. And uh, that's a really go-to karaoke song. How about you, Bobby? You ever sing karaoke? Like sing something that people don't expect? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, 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 do, I, I never do my songs. Okay. I Obviously. do I do other people's songs and my go to karaoke song and it's a panty dropper all the time. That, well that, there's there there's gotta be it's gotta be two, but but really the main one is Hello from Lionel Richie. Oh okay. yeah, hello. Okay. Yeah. I was expecting some I, people. I, I like karaoke, <laughs> I like I like to sing English, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know mine is mine is Desvelado. No, I'm just kidding. Now then, get, then I get my ass kicked for butchering the song. Let la verga, cabrón. No les verga, chica, tu madre, güey. No, hell no. I can't sing. Sh I can't sing for shit. I think, I think if I sing a karaoke song, uh, it's gotta be like something like that's probably rapped or something like a hip hop or something that's easy to follow. Cause if it if it carries a tune or a note, no, ya valió madre, güey. I but hey, since cool. you you cannot butcher desvelado. I mean, it it's it doesn't matter if you sing it like shit. Uh, it's it's gonna sound. No it's, it's, hell no, no, it's, bro. It's, it's just, it's a you gotta understand. It's a, like even if you don't sing, like the DJ helps you out. Like he'll like put up the vocals, turn your mic down. Like all right, this guy sucks. So this guy's too drunk. But yeah. you don't look, dude. No, that's that, a that, it, it, it's so easy of a song to sing. Even an idiot can sing it. Ah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, I'm just saying, to me, it's like disrespecting, you know how many panties have been dropped to that damn song? Shit. Chingo. Un yeah. chingo. And chingo, yeah. dude. Fuck. I mean, look, dude, I do, it's funny because I, I discovered that song, dude, was because my wife, my wife, a big fan of yours, and she would play it. And, and I, I honestly, I was like, I didn't listen to Tejano music or to, you know, whatever, that kind of music at that time. I'm like, you know, say, get it. Whatever the fuck you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> dude, it's funny because she introduced me to, you know, you're, 
you're with a woman long enough, you start getting introduced to shit that you're like, oh shit, like I never thought I'd watch this. Or I never <laughs> thought, you know what I mean? Like, quite honestly. Like, like what have you recently seen that you didn't think you'd be watching? Oh, you already know, dude. This motherfucker is always making fun. My <laughs> wife watches this show on Netflix called Pose, and it's about transsexuals. Okay. And, oh, it, and shit. It, it's about transsexuals in the early 80s. And Cisco AIDS... can give you a pretty good rundown on the show. No, I can't. I've only seen parts of it. But, but like, it's about uh, transsexuals in, in <laughs> New about... York City. <laughs> New York City in the early 80s when AIDS started hitting in the community. And, oh, people, and people were thinking that it was because gays, gay, you had to be gay, to, you know, to, to have AIDS. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, I mean, we started discovering that anybody could get that shit. You know, I mean, it's kind of like this COVID shit, man. Like, you know, they tell you one day, Ooh, if you shake okay. hands with somebody, you'll get it. And then the next day they say, nah, you're all right. And then, they, you know, I mean, they change all the time. I don't fucking know. I just think you just got to get it and get it over with, to be honest with you. Have anybody, have any yeah. of you been affected by it? Like anybody close to you? Yeah, I, I lost a compadre of mine. Did you? COVID. Uh, yeah, he Holy died down shit. here. He was in Brownsville. Um, but he... You know, bless his heart, man. He was real sick already. He had dialysis. He was on dialysis. Oh, he actually passed dude. away from I understand, while doing dialysis. Um, See, that's, so, yeah, that's, yeah, you know, it, 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 if there's anything that the COVID has kind of brought out is the message is you better fucking be healthy yeah. because, you know, it's going to get you. And if, and if, you don't, if you're not healthy, you, your body just can't fight it. You know, a lot of people that are healthy, Shit, man, no les pasa nada. Like, I have friends of mine that have the COVID. We have a big outbreak down here in the valley. And oh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, yeah, several, several friends of mine have it. And they're like, no, hombre, it's just like a, like a cold, like, a, like yeah. you just feel like shit and se te pasa. You know, but um, it just gets other people hard, man. But it's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult uh, uh, situation, man, because, man, we got to fucking work. Like, yeah. I mean, the, the bills, the bills don't stop, you know, they just keep, they keep coming and, 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 you know, you got to feed your family and you got to do that. And, and I don't know if what we're doing is the right thing. Cause fucking like American airlines and all these airlines over here, they're booking fucking flights hasta el tope, bro. Like full. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I can't go out there and have a concert, but the airlines can fucking book those things solid. And then you know how an airplane works? Yeah. All the air condition recycled. It's the same shit, yeah. you know. So that's two hundred new victims. That's two hundred new victims right there. Well, I mean, you know, you can get it definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about you, Alex? Yeah. Anybody? Uh, no, no. Well, Carlos Vallarta, you know, a comedian from here in Mexico, yeah. he he, uh, he got it, and he's yeah. already uh, been through it. Um, He's young, so I don't think he, he had any problems. But no, not... not well, look, in Mexico City, if the smog they ain't fucked with you yet, ain't yeah. shit COVID going to do to you, dog. That's, that's yeah. a fact right there. It's pretty much what's going on. I mean, uh, Mexico City is a tough city, so uh, COVID, it, 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 I, I don't know if it's the, the correct thing to do, but it's not in the priority list. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of people just thriving to survive the first. Nope. Knowing the Chilangos and the COVID, me la pela. Me la pela, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, and uh, a lot of people think it, it's, it, it doesn't even exist. And I just heard uh, so some stupid. news from, from Sinaloa, yeah. you know, where the cartels are. Where, where, where That's the where my family's from, by the way. So oh, easy, it's, easy, it's, easy play. No, no, no. It's a beautiful place, my friend. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it's a beautiful place, uh, and it has two governors. And, uh, so, uh, so we, there's this news. <laughs> that yeah. the cartel of, of El Chapo, of los, of los Chapitos, they just implemented a curfew in the Culiacán and in Mazatlán because oh. the government is not doing anything. So if the cartel catches you uh, after 10 o'clock in the evening, they can take you and they have like this wooden board and they hit you in the ass, just oh. like- uh, Like, like they confused. Boys. Holy yeah, like, shit. Like frat hey, boys, but they guns. Hey, what, we gotta, we, hey, we gotta start gathering. Up? What's up? Shit. What'd you say, Bobby? What'd you say? What's up with your peeps, man? Hey, we are a diverse country. We hey, we gotta, st hey, we gotta start gathering cholos here in the United States and be like, hey, yeah. hey, puto, if I see you at your house, watch, we're gonna get a mino calentada, homes. So, so, so they up. they charge you a fine and they hit you with a wooden board in the ass and uh, and that's it. So uh, that's it's good. Though. Primarily to be careful. 
That's good. That's, there's some tough pressure. Tough you know, yeah, my tough. brother, I have twin brothers. They both got COVID. Uh, my stepdad got it. And my stepdad's one of those guys. He's, you know, Mexicano fucking. He likes the, the, ah, yo tomo Bud Light. Bud Light mata el pinche COVID y la chingada. <laughs> That's a Sinaloa. That's what I'm telling you. My mom's from Sinaloa. You know, they're from Sinaloa. You know, fucking, and he got it. And then he's like, no mames, estoy bien aporreado. It's like, fucking no. And my, my brother was like, no, no, no está aporreado. Tiene COVID. Because yeah. I guess it attacks all your joints. You get sore as shit. Like, you know what I mean? They, they, uh, my brother had back pain. Well, my brother got it. And I, I, I assumed he was going to get it sooner or later because he works in the medical field. So I go, dude, you got to take care. He said people came in there coughing all the time and shit. I go, sooner or later, you're going to get it. But you're young. He's, my brothers are like 18 years younger than me, bro. So they're like 26, 27. I'm 45. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they're healthy. So, no, dude, dude, I started working out, walking, lifting a little bit of weights. I was like, fuck that shit. I go, that shit's not going to catch me fucking sitting on the couch or whatever. This is some bullshit. You know? Yes. How about you, Jose? You, you, did you know anybody? I don't remember you mentioning it. Yeah, my, um, my cousin's wife's uncle like passed away from COVID and they were just uh they were gonna have like a little me memorial thing because you know they can't get the body back so they were um oh yeah they were that's just gonna have like a little man. little reunion thing down that's here but then they were like they canceled because they saw the cases in Los Angeles was spiking like over a hundred thousand and my cousin's like damn we don't even have 18,000 over here where we're at you know it's like yeah stay where you're at so you Bobby you over there by McAllen is that where you're at yeah right by it yeah Edinburgh. Oh, is it? Was it Rome or was it? What's that? What's that? There's a town by. No, there's a place called Roma, but no, Roma. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, but that that's in Stark County. I'm I'm here in a place called Edinburgh. Oh, okay, Edinburgh. Oh shit. Yeah. It's fucking, and the people have have they been respecting it, on that area? You know what's? Yeah, it's weird, man. We have lots of like a, a lot of people that have gotten, uh, you know, que han contagiado, um, okay. but. Everywhere I go, people wear a mask, you know? So it, it's just one of those things that you go, well, fuck, man, where are they getting it? Now, the only thing I can think of is when they, they did that, they lifted the ban, the young people started going out and partying. South Padre and, Island, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. There was a major outbreak over there in Padre. So the people, when they're young, when you're young, bro, you don't give a shit. Yeah, that's you true. think you're bulletproof, and, you know? Um, but it is what it is, man. We got to deal with it. And I had chingles of fucking gigs canceled, you know. And um, I'm so broke, I can't even pay attention, man. <laughs> hey, you're a cowboy, though, man. You got land. You got horses. I'm assuming you got all yeah. that shit, no? Well, you see, we can. The good thing about being in Texas is we, we're never going to starve because we got lot, tons of game around here that we can eat and kill them and we can eat. So we're. As far as food goes, we're going to be good. We're going to be all right. You ever done that? You ever kill game? Yeah, what, man. What kind he of shit? Like guy, he, he looks like someone that has killed a lot of things. I, I, I get that vibe from I him. <laughs> I ain't going to lie, man. Okay, I'm from Texas, born and raised. I shot my first buck at the age of seven. Damn. Okay. And so... For, and that's the thing about social media nowadays like people do not understand and people are so fucking judgmental that it bothers the hell out of me because they don't understand that that's how you were raised and that's a culture here here bro growing up you know when people saw a dead deer in the back of your truck it was like hey badass buck you know yeah. and now it's like chinga tu madre mataste el podre venadito <laughs> you know and, and, and people are so like judgmental now about everything that you just can't really say much so yeah i mean i've been a hunter all my life and we eat what we did what we kill yeah you know but i've also i've also yeah man i, I mean i i my look man i'm burnt i'm all burnt i i cut the yard today but what my hobby is is i i shoot long range rifles like what snipers do oh, i shoot shit. out to a thousand i shoot out to a thousand yards i got a big rifle collection so that's my hobby. That's what I like to do. I don't even shoot, like to shoot at animals anymore. I like to shoot at steel plates. But if there's ever a time I need to hunt something, man, you know, all those people that criticize me, fuck you, you know, because uh, I but have really, the right to, to. People criticize you on social media or what? Oh, do people oh, take a stance on anything? Are you serious? Dude, 
Oh, dude, dude, I went fishing, bro. I went I fishing. fishing. <laughs> I caught a fish <laughs> and they chewed me out. He Pobre fucked the fish. Like, ah, fuck you, man. Like, Pobre yeah, I was, yeah, I swear to God, man. I, I mean, it's just like, God damn, like, when is it going to end? If, if, you somebody know, tells you to, if somebody tells you to fuck yourself because you, you hunted a deer, those guys, they should also help fuck you to themselves when they're eating a burger or, or, or whatever. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's no, it's, but doble moral. You yeah. Know. It, no it's sufrió. The, uh, no sufrió el animal. No sufrió. <laughs> Tú qué sabes, cabrón? Cállate el pincho cico. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shut your ass up. No, Alex. I no, the, anybody's an expert now. The thing is, we, you know, like, the, the part of Texas you're from is more like, well, in northern Mexico, it's kind of like yeah. the same. It's the same like people. Coahuila, Torreón. It's, 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 yeah, same people. So then yeah. you get the city folk. Like, uh, we're out here in L.A., and mm -hmm. then Alex is over there in Mexico City, and that's probably the people who are shitting on you is those fucking, like, those truly left, left liberal, like, so socialists who are all about supposedly protecting the animal. They're such fucking hypocrites, bro. Because I see these motherfuckers complaining, and then I'll see them with a little fucking uh, a Nike shirt or a fucking some Nike shoes, Jordans. And I'm like, you're such a fucking, you're over here criticizing people for doing shit that we've been doing as humans from the beginning of time, which is hunting and gathering. Uh, that's what we are. It's We're hunter gatherers. But you're fucking. You know what, you know what it is? It's virtue signaling, man. It's virtue signaling. Everybody, everybody wants to take the high road and think because they adopt a fucking rescue dog that they're good people. <laughs> and, and, you know. Oh, but then I get to put a sticker on my car, though. Huh? You got yeah, I get to put a sticker. sticker on my car. It's like, uh, <laughs> well, what's this? So it's, it's like a, a saying. It's like, I didn't adopt him or he adopted me or whatever. Like, yeah. like, like I, I, I'll give you an example. You know, I'm from the Valley, bro. We're, the Valley, the Rio Grande Valley is an impoverished area, right? We don't, we're, we're not a big city like Dallas or Houston or, yeah. we don't, you know, we have a lot of poor people and a lot of people that need, that need help. So I get together with a, with a, a guy and I said, you know what, I'm going to spend some money and I want you to give away some veggie baskets with all kinds of stuff on it. And so there I go, Hey man, you know, we're going to be giving away veggie baskets and still I got criticized. Jeez. I still got criticized because the people started saying, Oh, was the people that are going there have cars? Why don't you go to the neighborhoods of the people that don't have cars? Oh I'm my like, God. Hey, no, fuck. I, I mean, hey, bro. Why don't, you, it, why, don't you, why don't you give us a piece of the venadito you killed? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, not that, man. That, not that. That's... <laughs> we want some venadito no, too. <laughs> Culero. No, <laughs> te quedas con todo el pinche venado egoísta. What the fuck, no, dude? It, it, <laughs> It, it's it's really fucked up, bro. Like the stuff that happens on social media and that you see. Well, you know, it's like, you know, Bobby, like, like, like being like, look, you know, I don't know, like Alex, you have a show on net, you have your special on Netflix, man. Yeah. Congratulations on that, brother. Oh Same wow. Way. You know, I gotta see that, man. I yeah, gotta sure. see that. My my wife, my wife is from Mexico City, and she took a class with, um. Uh, a, a, a comedic class. A comedian with, Mexico. Uh, Sophia or Pelon? Yeah. What'd she do it with? Um, Alex. Uh, Fernandez? Alex Salazar? El Chaparro? El Chaparro? Salazar? Little no. dude? No, no. This dude's like a short guy with a. Kind yeah. Of like, he's got a head like. Bro. Um, Alex, Fernand Alex Chaparro he, Salazar? He got, a, he got a head like a toe. He's a short <laughs> guy. He wears leather jacket all the time and shit. He has glasses. He's like a Mexican dice yeah. player. I don't know if it's Alex. No, Sorry? no, I don't think. I'm going to find out right now. I'm going to text you right now. I don't yeah, know too sure, many, right? I don't know too many Alex's, but yeah, dude, that's crazy. Uh, no, I don't think Alex. So, so you, your, wife wanted, they, your wife wanted to do stand-up? Who, who did you take that uh, comedy class with over there in Mexico City? What was his name? There we go. We'll see what she answers. We'll see. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, sorry. No, no it's no, all good. Wife, it's all... Yeah. My, my, wife, my wife loves comedy, and, uh -huh. and uh, so... You know, when we were living in Mexico City, we have a place there. Um, we were always uh, checking out different stuff. So we need, to, we need to do that. Now that we got over here, nos amargamos, bro. No, <laughs> awesome, yeah. Check it out. It's, it's called, it's got a catchy title. It's called, my special's called The Best Comedian in the World. 
So, um, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. El mejor comediante en el mundo. Yeah, el mejor comediante del mundo. I, I, I mean, you gotta check it out to, to know uh, uh, why I had the the balls to just put on that title there. But it's all good, it's good branding. Right? You, you gotta do it. You gotta what? fucking do it. You gotta brand yeah. yourself. No, but what yeah. I was getting at is that uh, when you're in a position such as yourself, you know, Bobby and you, Alex, and you know, um, how many people in Edinburgh have toured the world or toured doing music or whatever? So they they you know. Asshole, the one that, that like, uh, I just had Manchita the other day, and she was saying, you know, comedy, you can't punch down. You know, when yeah. you punch down, you're an asshole. So people always pick on somebody they deem who's successful. And, you know, I mean, like, like so you're going to receive it when, you're, when you achieve a certain level of success. Of success. People yeah. are going to attack you. I mean, it's probably all those motherfuckers in Austin, I bet, because th that's where you're getting all those leftist socialists in fucking Texas now, in Austin, Texas. Yeah, man. No, bro. No, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, Cisco. There, and, and look, I'm not anti-leftist and I'm not anti-right. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm the same. I, I'm in the middle. I, I, I'm right in the middle, man. And my thing is, hey, live and let live, and don't be judging other people, man. And just leave yeah. God up to that. And so everybody, you know, um, I don't have an ideology, bro. I really, yeah. I don't have a fixed ideology and i think that's a that's a problem right now that we have everybody too many too many yeah. ideologies man it's crazy bro you, it's, you know what's happening what's happening here in mexico that it's really crazy with, in, in terms of uh social media and uh people trying to burn witches in the stake uh it, it's turned political so uh when a, a couple of my friends of, of comedian friends have gotten some uh huge cancellations and intentions of cancellation because what happens is that social media the bots you know from from both both the the, the party a turn and the opposition yeah they start to change the conversation just by by, by uh deviating it to us to, to whatever's happening so if a comedian uh has a joke that nobody half of the population doesn't agree with it it starts trending and trending and trending and you watch the tweets And it all has to do with the president or with the opposition. They just take the trend in order to change the conversation. So uh, it's, wow. it's getting really weird. It's uh, nasty, huh? It's a, yeah. It's cancel culture. Even more like man. on Facebook, too. Yeah, the cancel culture, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. It it's it's, it's, it's culture, just coming man. to Mexico. It's, we, they just canceled our first comedian here in Mexico. Uh, Ooh. They, uh, Chumel Torres. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on HBO. Yeah, they, they, they erased, totally erased his show from HBO. That's, that was something I, 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 not even with Louis. Yeah, but we know the joke he made, bro. Come yeah, on, dude. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm Which I'm, one, is that I'm the totally Choco Flan, dude? Yeah, this is Choco Flan. Did you hear about that, Bobby? I so did. Chum Chumel yeah. Torres called the president's son Choco Flan because he's so he dark. And, he's like, and, and he also, he also has a, a joke about, uh, 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 it, it's horrible. It, it, it's a chair made of indigenous people. Uh, he was trying to, uh, uh, to make a point with it. And uh, it, it, I mean, the joke, the joke punches down. Uh, See, yeah, that punches was, down, man. It, it was also taken out of context because he oh. was talking about someone else. But those two things, and he got his HBO show canceled and erased from the platform. So it was... What is it? Oh, oh man, was it what was the joke? Because I want to hear the second joke. The, the second so was joke, it temporary, yeah, but temporarily, temporarily, right? They have not permanent. They, they haven't. Uh, they just the minute he started trending, HBO erased everything, and they said they were going to assess the situation and do an uh, research and, and and see what they. Were you supposed to be on there, Bobby, or what? <laughs> no, <laughs> I thought you were supposed, no, no. you were supposed to be on there. Like fuck, man. No. Hey, we we follow each other on Twitter, oh, like okay. and, and 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 we're cool, man. Yeah. Like, you know, look, man, I'm a singer, but you guys are comedians, man. You guys yeah. shouldn't have those kind of boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't have those boundaries because where do you draw the line? You know, yeah. and that's the problem right now. Right. Like I had a, I did. They did an interview for me and they fucking suckered me into this in this interview because they said, oh, we're going to ask you about your CD and about your new song and all yeah. this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And somehow that fucking reporter got into politics. And I and I'm I studied political science. I was a political science major at the University of uh, St. Mary's in San Antonio, 
And so, you know, I, I know about politics and I yeah. keep up with politics. So they asked me what I thought about AMLO and I'm like, well, you know, he really did a good strategy by pitting the rich versus the poor. And there was more poor people. And so he basically told all the rich people, hey man, or, or all the poor people, you're, anyway, I said yeah. my opinion, my opinion, what I thought, my perception of what I saw, fucking I attacked me like a, they yeah. lynched me, bro. They Damn. lynched me on social media. Like brutally, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I think Trump's a dumbass, yeah. right? I really do. And, and, and I don't, I mean, I look at the guy and I'm like, God, he disgusts me, man, really. <laughs> uh, it's not even about politics, just more like a person. Yeah. But um, yeah. You think but, he has but, like bad I, hygiene? <laughs> bad hygiene. <Huh? laughs> he has bad hygiene. What? Do you think he, he has like bad, bad hygiene? No, man, it's not about his hygiene. You no, I'm playing around, though. <laughs> Bad hygiene. No, you know, you know what's fucked up about that, Bobby, that, that you say that, is that they set you up, man. That's the fucking thing, is that these, these journalists, they, yeah. they, like, they take pleasure in ruining people's careers. Like, like, it's like, I don't know if it's a status symbol for them. Like, I got his ass. Dude, it's clickbait. They want to get those clicks. Exactly, exactly. Jose is on to a point. Here's a here's a deal, bro. They don't. I don't take it personal. I don't think they're trying to hurt me. What yeah. they're trying to do is to make a living off of me at my expense, right? And whatever they can do that's controversial, they will put on there because that's what will make them money. And I have a problem with that. And yeah. it's like, you know, it. it they don't sucks, know the consequence. Like, they don't know the consequences of their fucking actions. Twitter. Twitter is just a, a fucking huge TMZ right now. I love Twitter, man. I love, I love Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> it's funny because I love Twitter more than Facebook, more than Instagram. Yeah, I, 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 I hate it, man. It's I uh, love Twitter, but yeah. Oh, uh, dude, man, Twitter's it, undefeated. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter can get dark, man. It can get fucking dark on there. Yeah. Like people, that's why. Go ahead. That that's why I thrive on Twitter. Yeah, that, I, that's why I thrive on Twitter because I embrace that. The darkness. The Oh no! no. You're, gonna to, you're, gonna to, you're gonna have to repeat it, Bobby, because it's kind of like that's the government. That, that's the government. government. Too much, too much truth. <laughs> you, are you, what do you have? <laughs> oh, hang on, let it, let it, let it catch up. Hey man, you, you don't have a uh, what you call it? Como se llama? I don't think he knows. <laughs> This is hit, weird. Hit I've never wax. seen this before. Hit him on the wax. When people would go. Oh, there we go. No. no. Bobby, you, you From the us? top. My, my, can you you have to can repeat you it because it, it kind of froze up. It was freezing up the whole time. Nah, can you hear me? I can hear you, but your picture froze. So you're a hunter, Bobby. There no. goes. Okay. There he goes. Oh, you have to repeat what you were saying because. It, when you started to say it, it just started to free. Like it started like sound like you were going. Oh, wah, 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 wah. oh and, and you got to do a land, uh, horizontal landscape. Bobby. All right, can, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can hear you. You're good. There you go. You're okay, about man. Thriving. Don't trip. Twitter. No, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. So Twitter gods, man. I live, I live, I live in the rancho. Yeah. And so, that's why I can't be on real long because I I don't have normal Wi-Fi. Oh, no. I have I have satellite Wi-Fi, oh, and okay. these and these and these motherfuckers they they go and they only give you a certain amount of Wi-Fi a month, so it goes sucking it up. Oh. So is that huge? So shit? anyhow, is it that huge? Huh? Shit? How many windows do you have open? How many windows? What do you mean? What the fuck? Like tabs. Like tabs. Uh, on maybe my you have more than two. He's on his phone, bro. Oh no, yeah. I just I just got on my phone, bro. Oh, hey, okay. But, okay. Is it that Hughes? Is it that Hughes satellite Wi-Fi or what is it? Or it, it, it's it's called Viasat, which is actually I had Hughes and Hughes Net sucked, and yeah. so Viasat's a little better, but it it it, it does that. So uh, anyway, I what, what I was gonna say? Oh, just real quick, Gus Gus Proal. Ah, Gus Proal. Oh, Gus yeah. Proal. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, good guy, funny guy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, um, what I was gonna tell you, I I forgot what I, what, what what before. I, this shit cut off. We're talking about the Twitter and, and, the, and the people like they, oh, they, yeah. they set you. My, my, my humor is really dark. So yeah. when people started insulting me, um, a lot of these trolls would come in and, you know, 
I would give them likes, dude. And, uh, <laughs> and then, fuck you, puto, you suck, and this and that, and I would like. And it, it really threw them off guard. So a lot of those that, it's, you got to understand the Twitter language, how to live in there. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, you have that thick skin, I, man. You have that thick skin. Yeah. You got to yeah. have thick skin. Because I've done that. I've done the same thing. People have put negative shit about me. Like, I got, I would like a like, like, hey, <laughs> man, make sure you follow me. <laughs> so you can, you can have more shit to talk about. You ever had that, Alex? Have you ever had negative comments? Oh, fuck yeah. All the time. Uh, What's the worst one? What's the worst one that you can remember? There, uh, there is, I mean, there are some really cheap shots on, uh, on Twitter and on, on my last special. Uh, uh, I tell I tell the story of my brother and uh, he had cancer and he passed away. So I tell there's a whole story about that. And uh, somebody sent me a tweet um, telling me that uh, hey, este pinche chillón con su hermanito que se le murió. Uh, oh, and like, Fuck, really, really, man? Like it, it's it, how I many mean, followers did this guy have? But I don't know, like minus ten. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man, it's just like, tell me that to my face, you know? Like, yeah. It, it, uh, well, that's the thing about social media. It's made. It made it's me, even worse if it's like an egg. It's like it's, the it's like made egg the, emoji. It's, it's oh. made. It's made the cowards brave, man. Yeah. Look at those buck up there, man. I see you, Bobby. Sporting those bucks up. Those, those head. You killed those. You killed all of those. We gotta hide these, man. <laughs> and they're all different <laughs> colors. I appreciate that. That's that's nice. It doesn't discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> right. Diversity. No, dude, but like, like it's made, it's made, uh, it's made these, these online thugs, you know, like they're just, they, you know, it's giving everybody courage. They can go on there and they can hide, especially the ones that their name is like fucking, you know, like Chivo three, five, eight, nine, 10, 20, you know, like who the fuck is that? And, and they hide, they disguise but, but, themselves. Themselves. But let me them. ask you this. Let me ask you guys this. Have you ever met one of those trolls in person? I no. have. You oh, have? you have? have? Damn. I have. Oh, my oh, God. Did you, did, did you personally DM your address? <laughs> you take out your record. No. And I bet you they this... told you. And I bet you they told you. Yeah, I, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. No, no, bro. Let me tell you what happened. This motherfucker came in there and started calling me a puto maricon, this, that. And so I have a lot of bad friends on Twitter that are trolls, too. Oh. So we turned it on him because he looked like Mr. Potato Head. The guy looked like Mr. Potato Head. I swear to God, with the ears like that. And he had that round face, morenito. And so everybody just started dogging him. He blocked me. So then years go by, and I go sing in Pasco, Washington. And I, I remember that fucker was from Pasco, Washington. And you'll never guess who was in line to take a picture with me. Oh, that motherfucker. my God. That's what I'm saying. I swear to, I swear to God. How did you I find out? How did you find out? I looked at the guy and I went, I know you, man. You And he goes, uh, and I go, you know what? You Dude, were that's crazy. To that me. Been like and a... he started laughing. He goes, I was just messing around, man. I told you. But, I told but, you. Yeah. I knew he said that. I knew he said that. They, yeah. do, they, just, they just want your attention. They feel like throwing negativity at you. Like, you're not going to respond to them. Either. Like, if they say, hey, what's up, Bobby? I'm a fan yeah. of yours. And you're like, ah, fuck it. So they got to throw they gotta throw shade at you so that you reply, like, hey, man, fuck you or whatever. And then Dang, they have your What kind attention. of fucking trauma like, are these fans going that's, through? Jesus that's their Christ. way. It's like, it's like the dog that pisses in the corner, man, because you don't play with him and shit. He just wants your fucking attention. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Bobby, yeah, uh, did, that, did, did the fan take his it. glasses off and, and put him in, the, in his ass like Mr. Potato Head? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no man he was more embarrassed he was real embarrassed <laughs> the guy was embarrassed of course he was yeah, sure. and was he a big yeah. dude was he a little dude no he was a gordito he's a gordito yeah those... yeah he, was, he looked like mr so, potato head bro i swear to god so what <laughs> kind of security do you have to prevent like the crazy like the deranged fans from coming to attack you like at the no, meeting man. greets and stuff he doesn't have bro, that it ain't like that I, I ain't a fucking i i I, I ain't a part of the Backstreet Boys, you know, <laughs> you know, it's if people, you know, they'll get a little aggressive and then you have somebody that goes, hey, you know, hey, and they're like, they're like this, they're like this and they're like, let him go, let him go, let him go. 
It's okay. It's okay. Relax. I don't know, but that's that. It's not nothing crazy. Hey, Bobby, you know there's uh, fucking singing Zach de la Rocha songs, are you? Fucking fuck the government. Oh, that would be there. a good karaoke song. <laughs> and then, nah, and then, man. and then they, and then they attack you. You know Zach no. de la Rocha, right? From Rage Against the Machine. Oh no, I don't even know who that fucker is. Oh, no. listen to that. He's a he's a Jewish. What is he Latino? He's Mexican, yeah. yeah. He's Mexican, he has, Jewish, right? He has some Mexican blood in him. And yeah, he like, sang a song, Los Tigres. Yeah. Somos más americanos, right? Somos más americanos. Somos más on, on, Americ uh, yeah, like fucking, yeah. He's singing, Folsom, in, in the Folsom on the, Prison. On the Tigres Unplugged. Yeah. He sang oh. with them. Hey, how, cool. how, let me ask you a question. So, you know Emilio, right? Emilio Navaira? Absolutely. Yeah, Emilio. I remember Emilio and Raulito, his brother, man. I got to do a... That I think I, I, talk, I told you when I met you. I, I met so I met Bobby uh, doing Rene Franco's show oh, in right. Mexico City. So uh, we were backstage. We started shooting it, and he's like, "Oh, I, I know Felipe Esparza." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" You know, like comedy fan, you know, musician, and we were just bullshit. Nice. And, and Felipe, uh, Felipe the Pothead Esparza. Well, look at Jose yeah, right man. now. Look at Jose's <laughs> eyes, bro. <laughs> pinches, pinches hippies, way. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, he's no. a cool cat, man. Yeah, he was in San Antonio. He was supposed to be in San Antonio this weekend. They just passed. They canceled it, I think. Yeah, Fluffy was supposed to be here, too, and canceled him, too. Yeah, bro. No, but, yeah. uh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Uh, who's on weight now, huh? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Hey, <laughs> Cisco, I, 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 I've, I've uh, watched a couple of comedians already doing shows in the States. Is yeah. that possible? Yeah. Certain states, certain venues, I think certain places they'll have like every six feet or every six feet there's somebody or or if you're with somebody like two of you you came together and then six feet apart like it's fucking oh. weird man i mean me. hey you gotta make my i mean you know you gotta make money i guess you gotta make money dude i, I don't know dude you know, i people, waited in line for the people, post office you know bobby i don't know i don't know i mean you know i i know you're fucking bullshitting about i'm broke as shit but you know people <laughs> People do the Zooms, dude, and people pay to watch you on Zoom and get to talk to you. I don't know if you ever thought about it on Patreon. You could do your own no, like, video. No, man. No. I, you know, I, I, I can't say that I can't get to that point, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay for now. I feel bad okay. for <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not that broke. <laughs> no, because comedians do shit. Comedians do shows on – I, I did one. I'll be honest with you. Ain't nothing like feeling the crowd's energy. Ain't nothing like that. Like, yeah. you got to feel the people's yell, like, the scream, the laughs, the fucking, you know, you need that. Even if they fucking booing me, I need that. I don't fucking, you know, I, I thrive off that energy. I, when, if I get a, if I get a, um, if I get an audience that just doesn't want to, that's just, like, I don't I'm know, like, like, you know, certain, go ahead, man. Like, you know, there's certain, you know, Alex, I'm sure you've had these days where it just seems like there's no fucking energy in the room whatsoever. Yeah. And you come, he sales todo sudado way, like all fucking uh -huh. drenched in sweat. Like, bro, I had to work too fucking hard to get six laughs. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know if yeah. this is worth it today. I, I, I would even, I would even pay to do a shitty show with six people that hate me. <laughs> even the Mr. Potato Head guy in the audience. Uh, I know he paid for the VIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would be on stage with me, bumping <laughs> mics, you know, and. Yeah. and um, <laughs> I would rather pay for that than than doing a a, a Zoom show. I, I just can't. It's oh oh sorry. But I, if the I, money's right, I remember when I was yeah. getting it. So ah. I got to, I, <laughs> I got to do I got to do an event with uh, Emilio and uh, La Mafia mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Jay Perez. I think that was his yeah. name. Jay Perez. He's from Texas Jay too. Perez. Yeah, they're yeah. cool people, man. They were all cool with me. I hosted it. It was in uh, Ford Pavilion in Beaumont. Mm. I don't know if you've ever been out there to Beaumont. Then they told me, don't go a couple miles east because there's a place called yeah. Bider, Bider, Texas. Right, bro. They, they'll lynch your ass there. Damn. The, Ku, the Ku Klux Klan, no? Right. That's right. Bider, really? Texas. As racist as comes. Have you yeah. ever, have, have you ever had, living, living, being from Texas, have you ever had any, any confrontation with anybody like that? Have you ever met yes. anyone? I'll tell you guys the truth. I had an issue with a fucking cop, man. Okay. Uh, in Mississippi. Oh shit. Yeah. I used to live in I used to live in Miami. I'm I, I'm trying to change and get comfortable here, man. Go ahead. I, I, I thought I thought you were taking us to your basement and you have a cop over there. <laughs> nah, man. I, 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 like Pulp Fiction. You're going to the I basement. Used, he I said you live, he said you're going to the basement. You got the cop down there. I know. 
I used to live in Miami. Okay. And so when I was driving back, I was, I was already coming back to Texas. I was driving a Jaguar. And so I was at a, a convenience store, me and my friend, and I went and got something. And, you know, like we went and took a piss and got some drinks or whatever. And when we pulled out, this cop had some people uh, stop there. And so, you know, we, we, we just take off. And I see him haul ass out of the, uh, out of the convenience store and just go right up on me and turn the lights on me. And I'm like, dude, I know I didn't do anything wrong. Why is this guy stopping me? So the guy stops me. He's like, I said, can I ask you why you stopped me? And he says, oh, I stopped you because you, you, you crossed this white line. I go, you got to be fucking kidding me, man. And he's like, yeah, you crossed the line. So uh, can I see your driver's license? And I go, that's a bullshit reason why you stopped me, man. Like, I was, I was really upset, you know. Um, and he goes, look, man, I'm working with a special unit, and, you know, we're looking for drugs. I said, what, is it because you saw a Mexican driving a Jag? And some bitch tells me, well, I thought you were Cuban. <laughs> and, oh, and I was like, Mediterranean, oh, maybe. Tony Montana. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> I guess so, man. I said, and he goes, look, man, I ain't going to lie. We don't see guys like you driving cars like that around here. And so we're looking for money and drugs. And So is he, he being kinda, honest or is he being racist? Yeah, I'm sorry. I left my burro at home, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah bro. I mean, <laughs> that's a thing, you know, I don't know, man. But that, is that the that's, worst? That's, that's the worst? That's, that's my experience. I, my band, you know, I flew. My band went through Memphis, uh, Tennessee, bro. Oh, and you killed your band? And no. A lot of people don't. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, you know, do you, you, you listen to country music? Yeah, somewhat. Old, I'm old, uh, old school country. Old school country. Uh, no, there's a singer. I became like that racist with, country. I became friends with him and his band. His name is Cody Johnson. <laughs> He's from Huntsville, no. Texas. Oh, no, I don't know him. Pretty man. good, man. They're good, dude. They're good. But anyway, sorry. But just, my, guys, my guys go to a Taco Bell. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and the Taco, the Taco Bell is full of black people that were working there. Okay. And they go and they close the thing, dude, on, on that shit. And so when my guys went and knocked, like, hey, man, you know, we wanted to go in there and eat. And the black person goes up there and says, we ain't got no beans. Damn. And, and, and he said, well, it's okay, man. We can eat something else or whatever. But no, I said, we don't got no beans and did not let them in. So man. when I see all these Black Lives Matter thing and all this, I'm thinking, man, the racism occurs from everywhere. blacks to Mexicans, Mexicans to gringos. Uh, yeah. It's everywhere, man. Uh, there's all the racism doesn't just work one way. It goes, it goes, it goes back, back and forward. You know. Yeah. So, yeah to me, to me, ra well, I mean, racism is more when, when, well, in a situation like that where you have the authority because they have the authority to deny you to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and yeah. you're and you're basing it on who they are. That's racism. But to me, a lot of like a lot of the stuff that you see on social media where, you know, people are arguing in a parking lot, y que la chingada, and, and I'm like, that's not even, that's not race, that's ignorance, man. Like, people are just spitting out stupid shit, and, like, you know, uh, that, that problem in this country is more ignorance than anything. Like, motherfuckers, we, like, people are not used to l dealing with each other. Like, I, that's why I always say, like, Latinos move in, black people move out. Black people move in, white people move out. It's like we never we never live amongst each other. Um, and Texas, it's different, right? I mean, there, you but you still you still have your pockets that are all Latino or all Mexican, and then you have no. Is it? Is no, it mixed? I'm in the real. I'm in the real Grand Valley, bro. Uh -huh. Okay, because I'm in the real rich county. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say, no. <laughs> I'm hanging out with these broke people. <laughs> I'm in the real Grand Valley. We're ninety five percent Hispanic here. Oh shit. Okay. So we hardly, we had three black, black families in the city while I was growing up. So we didn't really have a lot of black people here. We don't have a lot of white people here. We just got a lot of Hispanics. Now, before this land used to be Mexico, my ancestors were here chingos, bro. Yeah. Right? A long time ago. Um, so we all predominantly speak English, right? Because we've been many generations of, 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 you know, my, my great grandmother was born in Yorktown, Texas. 
Oh, just shit. so you have an idea. And my great great grandmother was born in Brownsville. So, oh, shit. so we have a lot of tradition here. Ahorita, yeah, there's a lot of Mexicans that are first generation and everything that the population are, are they're living here. But for a long time, we were just Tejanos, man. That's 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 where that comes from, right? You know, we're people that were in Texas, but proud of our roots. Shit, once upon a time, uh, Texas, Texas, y Coahuila, that was one state. Yeah. It was like, they, right. they, and then they divided it into two. That's it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Like, it's funny because we always say that we, the, the border crossed us. We didn't cross the border, right? Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask Bobby, you said that um, you got pulled over by a, a black cop in Mississippi. And no, it wasn't oh, a black cop. It was a white dude. Oh, a white dude in Mississippi. And like, oh, in Memphis. Was, in Memphis, it was a oh, in Memphis. Yeah. But yeah. the question I want to ask is, have you ever used your name to get out of stuff? I don't know about Mississippi. There's a lot of Tex-Mex listening. Music no, bro. Listening people. <laughs> Listen, I've never, I've never used my name to get out of stuff. The only thing I've used my name for, I ain't gonna lie, is in fucking Mexico and Acapulco to get into the fucking clubs. That's the only thing. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, yeah. Cause man, you're standing out there and they're like, when I was younger, right? You're standing out there and they're like, fucking, they got a line wrapped around the place and big old yeah, bodyguards. They won't let anybody through. So my friend goes over there. Bobby Pulido's over there, and he went, and they didn't believe him. So they're like, come over here, man, come over here. He's like, oh, she is, she is. Oh, she déjalo pasar, and that's the only time, man. <laughs> and and, Just and to those get guys, the, damn club. The, the bouncers, our uh, pride and joy here in Mexico, they are, uh, like, the most racist. <laughs> are they? <laughs> really? I think oh, that yeah. goes around the world. It's any, funny. Like, and any, Alex, like, any bouncer Alex, in any country. Alex, and it's funny because, like, you and I are like light complected, Mexi yeah. you know, Mexicans and shit. So, I mean, but I've I've gotten discriminated against before. Have you? Uh, uh, on on the clubs, yeah, sure. Maybe not not uh, by the color of my skin, but maybe by my uh, self esteem. Uh, on, the, <laughs> on the line, that's that's what uh, it's like. Ah, this dude, he doesn't look like he's got money or girls or whatever. So fuck off. We got another yeah. white dude. <laughs> That's the thing. If you bring like six chicks, they let you in. They move you to the front yeah. of the line. Yeah. Like if you, if it's two dudes or if three dudes. It's just me and my like, friend, and I'm sneaking yeah. in alcohol, like in Ziploc bags. No, trying to sneak in. Bugs. Like, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not getting in. We're what, happened, what happened to just drinking in the parking lot, bro? Fuck, you yeah. gotta sneak yeah. shit in. Oh, I wanna look cool drinking in the club, but I don't wanna pay <laughs> club price drinks while what, I'm in there. Hey, Bobby, what do you, what, how old were you when you started singing? Oh, geez, man. Like, I used to like to sing, like, when I was younger, little, like, seven, eight years old. But just, my dad, my dad's a singer, so when he would sing, I would kind of, like, oh, that's right. sing along with him. I really liked it, but I didn't want to be a singer. I wanted to be a lawyer. No so, shit. Uh, yeah, I studied political science at, at University yeah. of St. Mary's. As a matter of fact, uh, I just put in a, a little feeler. Oh, another thing about using my name, right? Yeah. I put it, <laughs> just a one time, but I'm thinking about yeah. another time. <laughs> I, I, I put in a feeler there to see, I lack 21 hours to finish my degree. Oh, shit. So maybe, maybe, maybe with this COVID bullshit, I can't go work. Yeah. So maybe, maybe just maybe I'll be able to go and uh, finish, finish up. Yeah. What, did, cool. And gr growing up, were you, was Tejano music your favorite music? Hell no. No? What was it? Was oh, it man. My, was it uh, my, I, my the Ghetto Boys? Music? The Ghetto Boys. Ghetto Boys. <laughs> <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite music was rock, bro. No shit. I was a total rock. I mean, I'm talking wait, about... Wait, what, what kind of rock, though? Because there's yeah. very variations. Yeah, yeah. From my, from my era. Metallica. Uh, Guns N' Roses, Scorpions, um, like then Great it White. Went into, it went into Nirvana. Yeah. Um, um, Pearl Jam. I, Pearl Jam. Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Yeah. All that shit. No, Soundgarden. I was already kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I love already... Soundgarden. Well, good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what's crazy <laughs> because it's it's interesting you say that though because. I think I heard Pepe Aguilar once say that he was a rocker and then he, oh, he got into. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Right? Yeah. He, he wanted, wanted to, Pepe Aguilar but, yeah. always Pepe wanted, to, wanted be a rocker. to be a rocker. Yeah. He wanted to be a rocker? Fuck yeah. Yeah. But he didn't I think make everybody it. wants to be a rocker. Oh, shit. 
And what, what, yeah. Is it harder to be a rocker? I mean, when you're a Mexicano, you got legs the size of a fucking giraffe. You know, because that's nope. that, when your dad, you're not really doing. <laughs> when your dad's Antonio Aguilar, bro, yeah, uh, it's fucking hard to be a rocker. That's true. Because people people expect you to have a mariachi hat. Yeah, that's the way that's, it is, man. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So you used to, so you used to be, were you the kind of guy dri driving the Firebird with the fucking with with the Metallica playing or 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 a Motley Crue or some shit? Yeah. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me, man? Let me tell you something, man. When I was a college, when I was in high school and going to college, you know, my dad did well. He had money, so I tell my dad, "Hey, I want a Mustang, right? I wanted yeah. a Mustang." Damn. Yeah. And he tells me, "He got you a horse. He, he got you a dad, horse." <laughs> yeah. My my dad would laugh at me and said, "He goes, I ain't getting you no, I ain't getting you shit." I'm like, "Well, why not? You can afford a Mustang." He's like, "No, I'll get you a car. You know what he bought me, bro? My car." What? A Nissan 200 SX, baby blue color. Oh. I mean, ugly ass motherfucking. The little like uh, it's like an SUV type thing, right? Terrain type no, vehicle. No, it was a little car, bro. A 200 SX, a little little bitty. It was like the. <laughs> yeah, Martin. I remember those. It was I like remember those. Old, it was like the Sudo is now. Okay. Yeah. Right. That, no, the two, that's what it was. Those are the, the and, Toyota MR2 and the Nissan ZX. Those were like the. They were kind of the same. They were little two two doors and two seater, right? Right, it was a two door, yeah. yeah. That's two a seater. Rucker. That's a rucker car, my friend. <laughs> two seater, right? There was no seats in the back. And, and you know what, though, man, I give my dad a lot of credit for not doing that because my dad, if there's one thing my dad never did was spoils. That's great. You know, he, he always told me, "Hey, man, you're gonna make enough money one day if you work hard enough to buy your own Mustang." You know. That's what's up. And did you? Do you, know, do that? you do that with your kids? Nah, bro. <laughs> you, spoil, you spoil them? You spoil them? They have two Mustangs each. <laughs> I don't, hey, man, I don't spoil them, but, but I, I will tell you, man, I, I lend my son my Jag. Oh, shit. The, oh, the no. same Jag. He went the to same Memphis. Jag, the same Jag that I got pulled over over there. Yeah. You know, it, it, I kept the Jag. I, I was like, I, I, was, I paid it off and I kept it. So I said, okay, you can drive it. Motherfucker got liquored up. Oh. And wrecked it. Totally. Oh, damn. See, your dad okay? knew, bro. Your dad knew the shit dad you were going to do. Your dad knew the shit you were going to do, man. Yeah. The, my wife tells me the same thing. She's like, she tells me about my boys. Hey, you can't just be buying them shit, man. Like, you're just buying them shit. And no. They got to earn but, that shit, even in school or whatever. But they got to earn it. But my, but here's my thing, bro. I mean, full disclosure, right? Yeah. I put I put a GPS... Uh, uh, thing on his uh, speedometer, on the speedometer, to oh, no. make sure he wasn't driving fast, <laughs> right? And it would send me an alert if he would go over fifty-five miles an hour. Oh shit! So I I did things to try to prevent shit like that, but I didn't give the fucker a breathalyzer to start the son of a bitch. Oh. So so oh, uh, yeah. That would be you know, funny. That would be funny. You're driving and you get a text from you. Hey, slow down, fucker. I did. <laughs> I, did. I did. I did. I'd, I'd get the text and, I, I, and an alert and I'd send him, hey, you better slow down. No te pases but, de verga, wey. Winky face yeah. emoji. How about you, Alex? Uh, no kids. So no, no kids, no, man. No one to spoil. No one to uh, spoil? How about no, growing we, up, man? Growing just, up. We just have a little, a little dog and that's the only guy we spoil over here. Uh, Did your parents okay. spoil you? Did your parents spoil you, man? Ah, uh, kind of. In, 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 what part, of, I, what, what part of Mexico? What part of Mexico are you from? Mexico City. Okay, what part though? But my family, uh, uh, I lived in uh, Satellite. In, uh, oh, in, uh, oh in, shit! That's yeah. a North nice there. area right there. That's our Jersey. Um, yeah, and, uh, Jersey. <laughs> that's our Jersey, and. Um, so I, I'm the sixth of, 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 we're six brothers and I'm the youngest um, oh, of my, uh, so in a way I was spoiled because I was a little one, but yeah. at the same time, I also was not spoiled because uh, I, I, I always say I had like distribution poverty, you know, because we were eight in the household. So, uh, uh, so when the money was given to all of the brothers, I was the last one. So I didn't get much in that <laughs> sense, but uh I mean, we always had everything we needed. Yeah, so. your parents, your parents always made sure 
you weren't lacking anything and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white guy in Mexico, so. Uh, did you know? Did you know Fran Evia when you lived in Satellite? Yeah, sure. Yeah? yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we worked a lot together, and uh, he's also from the Bronx. We call it the Bronx here. Nothing to do with the Bronx in New York, but we call it the oh, Bronx. Okay. Oh shit! You got a Bronx in Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, but it's no, different. No, but Satellite is nothing like the Bronx, bro. No, Satellite I, is nice. I think it's more like a Jersey thing. Yeah. Because like, people just have poor taste in Satellite. So Satellite, <laughs> so uh, what's the name? Just gave us the, 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 the backstory on Satellite. I think it was it Juan Carlos yesterday. He gave me, yeah. you know, he gave, he gave me the backstory. He said that, that Satellite was created for people who didn't want to live in Mexico City, for the government yeah. people. It, it, was, it was like a, a middle class, middle upper class neighborhood just far away from the city. It was, uh, I think it was from Miguel Aleman times, uh, our president, mm -hmm. um, he also stole. And- uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little fact. Yeah, as, as all of them. And, and what happened as, was that the, the city started growing and it became part of the city. So, uh, you know, the, the, they said it was like an oasis, but it just ended up being the, the same thing. An yeah. oasis and it ended up being a swamp. Yep, yeah, yeah. Hey Bobby, I, I got mean, a question. It's like a, it's like a middle class neighborhood. It's it's a pretty uh, yes. decent neighborhood. It, it has a lot of contrasts as everything in Mexico, but it's 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 a it's a good place. It's a colorful place to grow up. I got to do, I got to do comedy there with Macario. He had a couple oh. of shows there for a while. It's pretty. Oh cool. yeah, yeah. The, the, in nice. this little like rock joint, right? In yeah, the, yeah. Fuck, dude. I remember that place. Yeah, fuck. fuck it was fun. Place. It was fun, but the yeah, the cra the people were yeah, they were nuts. Yeah. But, uh, hey, Bob, hey, Bobby. So you know, you know, you always hear dudes say, like, uh, "Oh man, I want to, I want to Miami. Fucking chicks are hot there." And you know, and I'm like, man, the chicks are hot everywhere, bro. What the fuck? Anywhere you go. But no, it's not true. No, where's the worst? <laughs> where's the ugliest chicks? I mean, nah, like, you're not gonna get me to do that shit, man. <laughs> Doing you're the clickbait. Give me a fucking hey, Cristiano Ferro, man. Like, I do a joke about where the ugliest chicks are from, and there's always one in the crowd stands up. I'm from there and i'm like yeah. yeah there you go there's an example thank you <laughs> <laughs> but you're a, but you're a comedian i can't i'm not you know? okay where's but, the where's the lesser attractive women <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right or per per capita no there's, there, but no, there's a, okay let's just say we won't mention names but have there been some towns where you're like god damn bro god bless these people has there man, been don't <laughs> mention oh, that depends it has happened <laughs> Miami, Miami is absolutely has the, the most beautiful women you've ever seen. Per capita, seen. per capita. Yeah, because you have so many people from all, all the Latinas, right? Yeah. From everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Right? And and so I lived there for two a little over two years. And uh and of course I had just gotten divorced. So Ooh. I went to Miami and I was oh, like perfect. And and dude, and, and in Miami, everybody looks nice, right? Yeah. But not all the time, but for the most part, you see guys that are all buff and everything, they're gay. No right? shit. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, damn, there's no competition here, man. Like, you know, <laughs> Tingles of Tingles of beautiful women there. That's that's apps gotta be the top for sure. Really? But, top? Oh yeah. How about in Mexico? How about in Mexico? Okay, but outside outside the, the United beautiful, States. The most beautiful in Mexico. Uh, oh, Los Santos de Jalisco. Los Altos de Jalisco mm -hmm. and uh, Sonora. Really? Sonora? Hermosillo or what? Yep. Damn. I did, Sonora, I wouldn't, I don't know, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's in the middle of the desert. Like, yeah. fuck. So it's but like it the Phoenix. Little, I, I don't know the story of Sonora because it was pretty much an indigenous state. and But there's a lot of uh, white people living there right now. And... Uh, so the yeah. mixture, the mixture. There's a mixture. But, you know, Sonora and, and Sinaloa, they, they, they both have beautiful women. But at the same time, they're like some of the most conservative states in Mexico. Yeah. So yeah. they expect you to get married and to... Uh, my, wife, uh, my wife's from Mazatlán. Yeah. So, yeah, she's from Mazatlán, Sinaloa. That, well, my mom's from Sinaloa. It's crazy. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of beautiful women. Culiacán, they're all operadas because they're trying to hook up with a narco or a yeah, young age. Buchonas, as they call them. Yeah, those buchonas, they call them, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like Colombian girls, man. You hear that shit? They're like 17 years old and they're getting their boobs done and their butts what? done. Yes, and yeah, in Colombia, that's, it's cheap. It's cheap over there. 
and they get it done at an early age. I mean, what do you think? What's your guys' opinion on that? Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not into that all that fake shit. I'll be, I'm, I'm straight up. Like, I'm not one of those guys. Like, oh fuck, it's fake. It's not for me. But I mean, I, I agree. It just looks different on certain women. I, I'm not into that Barbie like where it's perfect. It's like it's there's gotta be a little fucking defect, man. Like they gotta be, they gotta have some natural to them. It can't be like it just doesn't look right. I don't know. It, it'd be like, like a, a dude, tooth thing or something. It'd be like a dude getting operation, just getting guns and fuck it. You know what I mean? Like it would just look weird. And I, I think there's dudes that do do that, right? They have those implants yeah. to make it look like they got fucking guns. So what do you guys' opinion on that? I mean, will they overdo yeah, I mean, it? Nah, it's not. It's not my thing. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's like a. Uh, it's like watching a shitty show on Netflix. I mean, it's not my thing, but I can watch. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. How about I, you, Bobby? I have a different take on that whole okay. situation, man. Like, you know, to me, it's not about the plastic surgery, right? Because people say, I want to help. I want to enhance what I got. I mean, yeah. I've been with women that have fake knockers and, and, and I like them and they <laughs> so look have I, nice. So have I. And, and, right, and they look nice, and you're like, "Hey, man, badass!" Right? Yeah. The problem that I have, what's a turn off to me, what's a turn off to me is that everybody gets what they get nowadays to show it off. Yeah. And and to me, to me, it's a red flag to see somebody always posting shit. It's an insecurity thing that look at me and look at me and look at me and look at me and showing the ass and showing this and showing that, and I can't be with a woman like that that bothers yeah. the hell out of me because that's somebody that's so much and so insecure that they're so into themselves that they will never be good partners in my opinion right so when i met my wife my wife's beautiful but my wife has no surgeries at all she's a natural woman loves to exercise and everything and when i met her i was like and she goes like why are you with me like you know you look at all these other girls and i said i like this i like you i like I like that you're not all about yourself. You know, she stays in shape. She's very fit. Um, but she's not putting on social media, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. So I don't like that. Yeah, I don't. I, and it's funny because you like, like, you know, once in a while, like, you get a message or something or, or something, somebody puts a like and you check out, what the fuck is it? Like, I'll check who's this. And then there'll be like some fucking fake page, some chick. And it's all pictures of a chick in a bikini. And I'm like, but then I don't even look at the pictures. What I look at is who follows them as well. And I'll see a bunch <laughs> of my friends follow that shit. I'm like, dude, you know that shit's fake, right? Like, that's not even like the, that person. What the fuck are you doing following that person? You are dumb. But it's, that's, it's sadly, Bobby, there's a lot of thirsty ass dudes out there, man. Like oh, a lot of, man. Like a lot of oh. desperation. Like, I don't. Like, I've never been one to follow chicks just because they're in a fucking bikini or whatever. Like, bikinis, there's fucking... Nowadays, it's like, it's not even... It, isn't, it just takes all the fun out of it. Before, we had to go to the beach or the pool, and you're like, hell yeah, there's going to be some chicks there in a bikini. But now, it's like, I don't even... You don't even need to go to the pool or to the beach. They're there. You've seen it. You've seen it all. You don't it's on demand. Need, you, don't have, you don't have to go look for that shit. It's like porn. We used to fucking have to hide the video or fucking whatever, they'll sneak it, whatever, to see something. Now you just go online, fucking type some shit, and boom, this. I don't. What's your fucking flavor? Yeah. You want a chick, you know, with knocker. You want a chick that takes it behind. You want, you know, you got fucking. It's everything for whoever, whatever, whatever your shit is, whatever your thing is. They got it on there. I'm like, God damn. It's hey, just Cisco, how about the OnlyFans? Have you have you heard of it? The, yeah. Uh, yes, I have. Oh, that's fuck, man. That's crazy. That's. Have, that's, you, have uh, you done that, Bobby? The OnlyFans. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking is that the about. One, is that the one where they pay you just to send yeah. somebody, hey, happy birthday, Marisa. De Bobby you, Pulido, you, aquí tu amigo you, Bobby you Pulido. Pay. And you, you get paid. You, you should think about doing a OnlyFans, Bobby. Yeah. A lot of, yeah, a lot of artists a lot of artists do that shit. It, you, pay, you pay a monthly fee to have access to some content of someone. So uh, oh, yeah, usually... Because the, the loophole in, in OnlyFans is uh, you can get paid to do your live video whatever it is. So if I'm a great carpenter, I'm, you're going to pay to watch me carpent a boat or whatever, I guess. Build some, build some or shit. Build some shit. jacking off. You decide what you want to do. Or jacking your off. Only fans. But <laughs> it's a spectrum, just like sexuality. So the, like the possibilities the are infinite. You're there on the camera. Hey, 
I was wondering where you were gonna come in. Fuck, shit, I'm almost done, man. I don't know what, what this is. Your so premium long. content, you deserve it. <laughs> Thank you for signing up for premium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next month, I'm gonna do it with two hands. So. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit, man. Yeah, dude. No, but like that's it's, it's only the one where they send messages to. They pay. Is that only? No, uh, you, you only you, you pay like a premium monthly to get whatever content somebody wants to upload. So uh, most of the times there is it's pictures, uh, photo shoots, and like pornographic stuff. And, but if and, you want the video, you have to but, pay extra for but that. But they've always had that, don't they? Always they have, they have yeah. like live yeah. webcams like forever. Like yeah, but yeah. now it's like nine dollars a month. So, uh, oh shit. So, dudes are fucking, oh my god, guys are going whatever broke price, on that shit. or whatever price you put on your sexual tension. Do they have a stock dudes. symbol? Fucking, I'll put some money into that shit. I know, yeah, I know that motherfucker's gonna go up. <laughs> Beaches maniacos everywhere, bro. It's it's crazy, and, and a lot of uh young people they see it as a, as a revenue uh source, so they start very young. I mean, being adults, obviously, yeah. but very young. Uh, starting doing those kinds of things, so it's it's a funny world we're living in. Fucking a, you know what, nah, man? I, to so, all the people out there, just listen to my music on the digital platforms, and I'll make world. <laughs> it's real simple. Listen to my music, I get paid. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. That's it. Hey, I'm so gonna, how much? It. So okay, so how much put, do you I'm get paid your, per I'm, stream? I'm, I'm gonna put your Spotify on a loop tonight, bro. I, 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 I'm gonna text you. I start getting on the Pandora. The end. Oh. It, yeah, pe it, people it. pay for those streaming farms <clears throat> so they have like a whole streaming farm of people just clicking people's music yeah but fuck that you get caught with that shit that shit's embarrassing you don't want to be in the That's news true. Bobby Pulido pagaba su streaming farms like what the fuck <laughs> I've never heard of a streaming farm yeah so yeah. They, they, you pay dudes in India and they run your shit 24-7 so that you keep getting no. money no shit huh? yeah that sounds great <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> They have streaming farms. Dude. Things that make you go, hmm. No, but hmm. you know what I was going to say was, like, I kind of, like, sometimes thank God that I was born in the era I was born because I got to experience life what it was like before all this technology, before all the cell phones. I mean, the pagers. You actually had to buy shit. porn on VHS, huh? You had to fucking buy porn on VHS or go into that little room that fucking, like, you know, that, that was separate from all the vid the rest of the video store. Go behind yeah. the little curtain. No, I never did that. <laughs> well, what's, what's going on in here? <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, I never went in that motherfucker. So I, used to, I used to watch who went in, though. I used to watch, like, these fucking old men that would walk into the little room to pick the video out to rent. That's got to be awkward. Well, those guys, <laughs> they are the ones that go to OnlyFans now. So yeah. They don't have to yeah. go to a curtain. But like, but, like, you know, I mean, you grew up around the same era, Bobby. You remember what it was like to fucking not even have call waiting, dog? People would call you, ya cuelga el teléfono, van a llamar, or whatever the fuck, you know? Absolutely, man, shit. I, when I started, there was no cell phones, bro. As yeah. a matter of fact, when I started, there was no beepers. Then the beepers kind of came in, you Damn. know? And then, and then there were cell phones. Yeah, I'm 47. And then, yeah, I'm 45. No, that's not old. I'm 45, so it's about the same era. So you were like, hey, I, don't, I need a quarter, bro. You got a quarter? I got to make this call real quick. <laughs> were you ever on the party line? The party line. Hell what no. is that? Party line. It's like a, you have like a voice mailbox and then like you, you say like, hey, I'm Bobby Pulido. And if you're interested in hanging out this weekend, leave me a message. And then people leave you a message guy, and then you go. And you, you know what happened? His <laughs> fucking manager will call, hey, what the fuck are you doing, Bobby? <laughs> I don't get hey, a dude, cut I, of that. I don't get a cut of that. <laughs> I'm from a rancho, bro. So we don't, we you know. How was it like meeting chicks? Like, how is it like meeting uh, chicks? When you're from a rancho, how is it like meeting chicks, man? What's it like, man? Well, when you're <laughs> from the rancho, you're either going to stay with somebody from your rancho or you're going to just realize real quick that she ain't here, right? <laughs> it, 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 it's real simple. Like, I went, nah, dude, not here. So I moved. <laughs> and I, I moved to, to Miami, and then I moved to Mexico City, and I met my wife over there. I remember. So when you when I met you, you you had just moved to Mexico City, I think. Correct, and that was be but that was before I had met my wife. No shit, that's crazy, yeah. dude. It's been that long, bro. And how did you like? How did you meet her? Like, uh, just out and about, or what, what? What? What were you doing? No, I I was doing una obra de teatro que se llama se llamaba Amor Eterno, mm. and um, that I did that that musical, 
and she was part of the uh, the elenco. Okay. So she was a dancer and singer there, and we met there. That's how I that's how I met her. And, how about you, Alex, and Satellite? Is it the same thing? Like, I'm either going to marry a chick from here the rest of my life, uh, or she ain't here? Actually, my wife is from Monterrey. I, I met her in my, uh, in my other life. Just, uh, just before going into comedy, I worked uh, at, uh, at a company doing marketing, and, and, and I was doing, like, a training program in Monterrey, and that's where I met her. And um, That's crazy. So I quit my job. She quit her job. Now she does photography. I do comedy, and... That's Dude, it. that's dope. Like, you guys both became artists. Like, fuck this job. Fuck yeah. this nine to five shit. I'm a comedian. Yes. I'm funny. You got a good eye, honey. You, of course you do. You picked me. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we tell the big corporations to fuck off. And now that we are in lockdown, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, this is the perfect time because you have all these platforms to do your own creative, like, you know, projects. And you have control over them. And yeah. nobody can tell you what to do. Yeah. yeah, you know what? We joke around about Spoken this. like a young person, we'll say. <laughs> you, know what, you know, Bobby, well, I mean, you've been, well, how long has your career been, Bobby? How many I'm years? Going on, I'm going on 25 years this year. Yeah. You know what you should do? You should do an acoustic set, and you should do it on Zoom, and you should charge everybody like three bucks to just watch you. Fuck charging. Just do it for free, bro. Fuck I'll do it for course. free, but dang, you can get paid. Monetize this. Do, do a YouTube live. Jose, how, how old are you, Jose? Oh, I'm 38. 38, okay. What do you do? Me, I'm a community like resource navigator. So I give like resources to like low income people, like recent arrivals that come to the state. Okay, so you're not an entrepreneur. No. Uh, All right. So that's, that's what I thought. Because <laughs> you just throw ideas out there, right? Just throw ideas right. like, fuck it, just try it, yeah. bro. You know, you should do this, you should do that, and you should do that. But it's tough, it, man. It's it, fucking tough. The business it's is real tough. tough. Entertainment business is tough, bro. Look, I've always I said, tough. I was just saying this the other day. I said, man, when you start, like, and I'm sure it's the same thing in music as in comedy. When you start, man, you fucking young, you fucking love it. It's like, I can't wait to get up there again and do it. And then it's, and it's not like I don't feel that way still, but the business side kind of ruins it for you. Yeah. Like all the, the, the shady promoters, the fucking, the, the the you know the other people who are trying to knock you down all the time or badmouth you or and that's you know, what I'm like, saying right now is like the perfect time like to in, like in take comedy, control of this. And comedy is really cutthroat. I don't know if you know Bobby, but man, motherfuckers like motherfuckers who are higher than you will tell a promoter, yeah, don't work with that motherfucker. He sucks. Oh yeah. Or they do shit like that, or he's hard to work with. He's hard to deal with. He's a de yeah. and then the motherfuckers listen to them. And I'm like, dude, you don't even, you didn't even know me. Like later on, I'll meet them and they'll be like, oh, bro, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I never brought you because, you know, one time somebody told me, and I'll be like, yeah, bro, you know, see, that's, you don't, you're not supposed to be going by what other people tell you. Talk to me. You know, we got, we got Zoom now. We got FaceTime. We can get on the phone and talk. And if you get a bad impression of me, then fuck it, you know? But that's, that's, that's the shit that kind of kills it for you in the business. I mean, did, did you experience the same shit? Oh yeah. Yeah. But like you said, like we talked about earlier, man, you know, you gotta be a certain type of breed of person to make it in show business. Yeah. You gotta have a thick skin yeah. and, and, and you gotta be a fucking go getter and, um, and you gotta have luck too on your side, you know, yeah. um, it, it's a little bit of everything that you have to have, but yeah, I, I met a, a couple, I, I met one guy from a fellow California New Year's that's a comedian. Oh. That was a big, big dick. Uh, really? And shook, and shook my hand. I, I'm like, I'm not gonna mention his name. No, but you he don't have to. My, he shook my hand with like with a dead fish like this, dude. Like really? literally, like like. So I I went yeah like like a dead fish. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Like this, dude. Like whatever, man. I humility. Humility. It seems like sometimes humility is hard to come by, man. Like some motherfuckers just like, uh, like, you know, they haven't even like, I've met guys who haven't done half the shit I've, I've done and I've, I haven't done much. I mean, I've, 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 I've done okay. You know, I've, I got, you know, my, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm respected. I have a show called the donkey show. Yeah, donkey show. <laughs> you know why, you know why I call it that? Because it's fucking a slap in the face to the gabachos who said, 
oh, there's a donkey. I've never fucking heard of no donkey show. I've never seen it. <laughs> and people swear that it exists. I'm like, that's yeah, shit. There's a donkey show. Oh, shit, that's a myth, bro. It's there a, oh, it's, it's, there's it. a donkey show. There's Does a donkey really show exist? where a horse, Does it really or, a horse exist? or a mule or a donkey. Where? Or a, where? Boys Town? I don't know where, but I know. It, I know. Boys Town? Boys Town? It's our, never... it's our uh, Cisco, it's our Bigfoot. You know, the donkey show in Mexico. See? It's our Bigfoot. It's, yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah. people say there ex- it exists. Like, Bob, you say it exists. I've yeah. never been to it. I've never seen it. I haven't, but I know some people that have. See, that people, that's the same thing. I'm the same thing. I know people who have, but, like, dude, I used to live in Tijuana. I used to be in Tijuana all the time. They it's kind of like, like the it's kind of like the gerbil they pulled out of Alex's ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not you, bro. Not you. Not you, Alex. Oh. I know. I know. But, uh, was that a true story, or is that, like, it's a rumor? It, it's 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 also it's like a donkey show, my friend. It's, it's, <laughs> maybe, like, maybe not. You're like not this, Alex, motherfuckers. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I I have all, other types of things up my ass, but not, but not, <laughs> not <this>. a gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, but like, so you know, I said, you know what, I'm gonna call it El Donkey Show because donkey. for years you heard this like in Tijuana, the border towns, like people say in boy. Then somebody told me. Oh, no, it's not in Tijuana. It's in Boys Town. Well, what the fuck? Somebody told me it was in Tijuana. Then they told me it was in Mexicali. Then they told me it was in Boys Town. Then they told me it's in Laredo or whatever, you know, the Nuevo Laredo, whatever. And then they told me it's over. I'm like, oh, fucking nobody knows where it's at. It's in Brownsville. My dad, not Brownsville. My, dad, my dad lost his virginity in a Mexican whorehouse. No That's, shit. My grandfather took him at, at the age of 15 to, orale, to learn. I told the Damn. lady, teach him. How times have changed, haven't they? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I took my, my son. Now you can my, actually pay for the grandma. I took my oldest son with me. I did a, little, I did a show in Tijuana. And, and you I know took, what, though? You, let me finish, though. Go ahead. I never judged my mom from that. No, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was born. And then I was born. What and the? that's how things go hey. in the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, hey. And your mom's like, times were hard, Miko. Times were hard. <laughs> and my feels the donkey, man. <laughs> oh, shit. That's, dude, oh. But think, you know, we laugh at that. But think about the people who were born out of shit like that, bro. Yeah. Think yeah. about that. That's, that mean, is, man. Imagine hard that, that that's to deal with, man. You find that's out. Sad. You find out your dad was your mom's John. You're like, holy shit. <laughs> that's, that's some fucked up shit. There. That's, some psycho- <laughs> that's some psychological shit that you add on top of the pressure of just life. Of fucking, you know, of working, man. You know, so you said you wanted to be a lawyer, Bobby. If you had, had, had music not paid off or whatever, is that what you would be doing right now, you think? Without a doubt. Straight up? Without a doubt. Without right. a doubt. What kind up. of law? What kind of law? Oh, man, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, what are you passionate about? What kind of you, the politics, or you think you would have yeah. ran? Would you ever run for politics? Maybe mayor of Edinburgh or what? I, I, they, they, there's been little things here and there. People asking me to run for like state representative and and um, get into politics, and and I like it, but you know it's so toxic, man. And and that's that's the thing that people take everything to the. You know, I think Trump's a dumbass, but I also think that there's things that he does that aren't so bad. Guys, I think I feel the same way. But because he's a dumbass, yeah, everybody just automatically, you know, will just say they'll they'll shut everything else out just because he's a dumbass. Ironically, because so, ironically, because he's a dumbass, that trumps the good shit he does. You know correct. what I mean? Correct. Yeah, there's people that there's no matter what he does, they'll never like him, and 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 I can't say that I. You know that I don't understand them. I do, but 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 we we're so polarized, man. Where everybody gets, you know, it's like Obama was Obama. There was things about Obama I didn't like, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, so the people on the left they deify him like he was this god that couldn't do anything wrong, um, and and so you know, to me, and then going back to what Alex was talking about with with two men, you know, presidents are supposed to be held to a high standard. And they're supposed to be challenged all the time because it's the most fucking powerful position in your country. Yeah. And 
they should be challenged regardless of anything, regardless if you fucking voted for them. You should also challenge them and hold them to the highest standards that you hold anybody. So how do you feel, Alex? How about you, Alex? What you been doing? If you wouldn't be doing comedy, would you still be doing marketing stuff or? Yeah, sure, definitely. I was, really? I, I mean, I, I was doing good. Uh, what what kind of stuff doing, did you do? What kind of stuff? I worked at Nestle. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Yeah, in, in marketing. I was, uh, uh, my last job was a marketing manager for uh, Baby Food, Gerber. And uh, Damn, I was that's a constant fine. check all the time, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was doing fine. I, I, I pictured myself in, in, in Switzerland, you know, uh, ending up my career over there. But then I, I met comedy and, and uh, I automatically said, fuck you, Nestle, in a nice way. When did you start comedy, Alex? Uh, seven years ago. Seven years ago, so 2013. Nice. So damn, you were barely starting when I saw when I went to Mexico City the first yeah. time. That yeah. wasn't my first time going. I first time I went to Mexico City, I did a commercial for Tecate Light, and oh. for, that was the first time I got to stay in Polanco. And oh, I thought, right. and so when I stayed in Polanco, I was like, "Fuck, dude, Mexico City's <laughs> you know ignorant ass motherfucker from the West Coast." Mexico City is nothing like fucking they tell you. This is the shit. Like, this yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Where are you staying? Polanco. Oh, motherfucker, you're in Beverly Hills. Shit, that's like that's the rich Exactly. They that's put me over the, 1%. That's over yeah. 1%. And, uh, yeah. They put me in the W in Polanco. I met you. Ooh. I met you. Uh, we were taping uh, Stan Parados. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Sure. So, damn, you had just started comedy and you got to do Stan pa You got on TV right away. Shit. Damn. Man. Good you, timing, you know, huh? You know what happened here in Mexico? It's it's pretty different uh, than the states. Uh, everything's happening really fast, so uh, yeah. we are we are getting opportunities. It's like everybody's trying to catch. It's like Mexico's trying to catch up to the United States in comedy. Yeah. Like like yeah. I don't have time to fucking write ten minutes. Come on, throw me on TV. I'll say whatever the fuck. I mean, <laughs> I, I I had my 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 special. You know, this year, yeah. seven years doing comedy. That's something that doesn't happen in the States. So, uh, But the beauty, man, is you guys are the fucking pioneers, bro. And this yeah. is what I told, because a lot of the comedians in Mexico were like, oh, I want to go to the States and I want to do comedy in English. And I go, why? You fucking own the Spanish comedy world. Why do you want to? I understand the crossover and whatnot, but yeah. fuck that. Fuck that, dude. You own your shit. You come over here, you go in English. Now you're competing with British, Australians, Irish fucking people in you know all over the rest of europe you're competing with coming spanish is your shit own yeah. that own that and once you own that they'll come get you because then they're gonna need you you, and, you know and we also we're also used to just watching the tip of the iceberg of the american comedy it's yeah. just we always watch we only watch the specials and ah, that's what i want to do it's my, yeah i mean you know what it takes for someone in the states to get and a spot in the cellar or in the comedy store it's it's a hell of a job so uh you know it's funny I bobby six, i'll be six, well, i got a, i got a question for you go ahead go ahead who, who was your inspiration in comedy growing up man <laughs> fucking yeah. eddie murphy delirious man when i saw yeah. that shit i lost my fucking oh. i lost my delirious, delirious and raw yeah but, no but delirious more than raw and then i liked i was a red i'm a red fox red fox is my idol but that was from Sanford and Son. Of like course. when I used, to, I used to watch Sanford and Son, I loved Red Fox. Cause my like like I, I'm a big Carlin fan. Oh, I love Carlin. Yeah. Too. He's 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 probably I'm my gonna, favorite. I'm gonna have his favorite. daughter on my show. She told me she's down to do it. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. She a comedian or, or? No, she has a radio show and she, uh, she has she writes books and stuff. She's you know yeah. she's a she's like a social critic. Like you know she talks about. I mean, fuck. You can't, it's got to rub off on you. You live with George Carlin, bro. Yeah, sure. That motherfucker was smart as shit. He knew that motherfucker was, he was ahead of the game politically, mentally, talking, talking about religious, talking about all the fake motherfuckers in the world, the shit they try to shove down our throat to, to brainwash us and, and to, to make us conformist. Because yeah. that's, that's what they try to make us. In, 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 and it doesn't matter what country you're in, bro. The, the powers that be want to make us conformist, man. So they can just yeah. manipulate us at every turn, sell us everything they got to sell. So they just be, keep becoming richer and richer and richer, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I don't know in Mexico, it's the same thing, a lot of propaganda. Oh, fuck man, all the time. And, and, uh, and it's funny, it's, it's the first time because we had like 70 years of one party just controlling everything and giving us 
their propaganda and every, we all hated the government and everybody hated the government. <laughs> um, but now we have a president that just as Trump is dividing the country. Uh, I mean, it's the first time we have a president that it's different to the rest, which is something that I think it's, it's good. But uh, for the first time, people are looking up to the president. So, uh, uh, so we get propaganda from both sides. Uh, it, it's, and, and you have to learn how to filter all that shit because all of the time, it just rains from both well, sides. Well, from what I've been told is it's kind of fucked up that he's kind of turned the poor people and told them, the rich motherfuckers, they have, what you, they have your money. And he's like, like turning them on to the people. Like, I guess they had uh, beef in Polanco where they were spray painting shit. And yeah, it's, you know, what, what, what he's doing really cleverly is that he owns a conversation. So uh, he goes in, in a morning conference, our president, and he tells whatever he wants to tell that morning. And that's just the agenda. He just, whatever he says, he sometimes says just some stupid stuff just to get us all going on, on, uh, on social media and he can work with his team and do whatever they want to. So they own the conversation. It's so, uh, Hey Bobby, so you, Damn, that's uh, good marketing. I, I think yeah. uh, from amongst all of us, you're the only one who's actually worked. I mean, lived in El Rancho in the city. So what are the pros and cons, man, that you see like the rancho? I know the rancho is the fresh air, the, the, the la tranquilidad, you know, the tranquility right. the space. But what are, like, what are the things that you do miss about the city? Oh, if, you, man. if there's if there's any, I mean, no, there there is actually. Um, like I said, I, I have a house there. Yeah. Uh, we have a place, and and um, we haven't been able to go, and we miss it a lot because you know where we're in the area at, we we like to walk and go to different restaurants. Man, you know, there's a there's a lot to be said. Like I, I'm I'm pretty much uh, bipolar, mm -hmm. um, in a sense that when I'm here in the valley. I, I find peace and tranquility, and then it gets to a point where it's so boring that you want action, right? Cabin miss, fever? You get that cabin fever? Yeah, you miss you miss people, you miss traffic, and then you go over there and you're like, yeah, fat ass, fat ass, fat ass. I'm like, oh, fucking get away from me, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, you pay, you know. So you're driving and it's just goddamn. I just I want to get the fuck out of here. So then you come back over here. So um, when all this shit is over, ideally, I tell my wife, you know, we just had a baby in December. Our, our, Congratulations, our, man! Thank you. Thank December you. December what? Our, our, December what? December sixteenth. Okay, I'm December twenty one. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So our our ideal situation is going to be in the summers. We want to go to Mexico City, spend the summers over there, and uh, come and and our kid go to school here and 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 get raised here where where it's pueblo, more pueblo. You know, I, and it's funny because I've been I, I, when people ask me like, you know, gabachos, and they say. Hey man, I want to go to Mexico. Where should I go? And I always tell them, Mexico City. Go to Mexico City, man. Because they always say, Oh, my friends told me to go to Cabo. They told me I go, Yeah. If you want to fucking be around more white people, more yeah. white people in Newport Beach, go to fucking Cabo, bro. I go, but well, our, our our favorite place to go is to San Miguel de Allende. See, I've never been there, man. I heard it's nice, man. It's, it's nice, super yeah. nice, man. I got, got really the... good friends that live there that are from there. Mm -hmm. And so I like to play golf. Me and my wife, we like to play golf. So when we were in Mexico City, our getaway was always to San Miguel. We were always in San Miguel. Yeah, I heard um, it's beautiful. I heard it's beautiful there. Man. It's badass, yeah. dude. It's I got to perform in Leon. I got to perform in Leon in Guanajuato. And yeah. I, so I've been to all over Mexico, but Mexico City is still like, I don't know, man. It's just fucking everything about it i love it man i love I, 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 bobby how was your time in mexico city you enjoyed it or is it's because i it's, liked it man it's I, I like it yeah no I, I i adapt really well and and like here here in the valley it like i said earlier we all have cars because it's so fucking hot it's 100 degrees during the day that, and and the distances are so long that everybody has to drive so when i went to mexico city i went I want to buy a place where we can walk. I want to walk. I don't want to drive. Yeah. I want to go walk into a place and go eat and go walk into the, to the super or go walk into, uh, you know, go shopping, walking. So that's basically, I, I like it, man. I, I really did. We adapted. What I like about Mexico too is that we can eat really healthy. Yeah. Mexico City, Mexico City, I love the fact that you walk and there's guys and there's people selling fruits and Fruits on the on the on the corner, 
So yeah. instead instead of eating junk food and shit like that, there's healthy stuff. I like it. We we go to the little the little uh, tianguis and go buy our our shit from them, yeah. fresh. And my wife can really cook and and uh, we miss it, man. We really do. We really miss a, a Mexico a lot. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I dude. Like I said, that's so far. It's been my favorite city, man. Mexico City. Just the vibe, the the people, and like you said the food. Fuck, man. There's there's a uh, there's something for everybody's palate. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, absolutely the steaks, the fucking. Uh, the only thing I was mad is cojo, man. First time I go to Mexico City, he takes me to fucking Hooters. Oh, I'm like, motherfucker, on, I don't want to go to Hooters. What the fuck are you taking me to Hooters for? No, I, told you, yeah. I told him to surprise me, take me somewhere nice. He takes me to fucking Hooters. I, 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 I think his, his train of thought was like, okay, so he's American, so uh, he definitely wants to check the waitresses. <laughs> yeah, like to him, it's cool, huh? <laughs> fucking to yeah. me. Dude, it's, just trip. It's, a trip. it's a trip when you're in Mexico and you see the Buffalo Wow Wings and Hooters and Chili's <laughs> yeah. and, yeah, yeah. and, you know, a fucking 7-Eleven on every goddamn corner. You're like, yeah. holy shit. And especially in the north, the north, the north of the country, it's just like Little America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ch Chihuahua, Sonora, Sinaloa. Monterrey. 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 Yeah, no, Nuevo León, all that shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all right, guys, man, we, I mean, we... We're going to wrap it up. Been on here for like an hour and a half. I, I appreciate it. We usually go like two, three hours, but I know you guys are fucking, if I have to wake up early and shit. Yeah, honest. motherfucker. No, my, my wife just sent me, my wife just sent me a text. Bring some of the elk meat, because I have, you know, we have elk meat here. Bring some of the elk meat so I can make it tomorrow. So. Nice. I, I heard that's, I heard that's some of the best shit, man. I never had elk. It's really good, man. It's real good. Real Joe Rogan. Mean. Joe Joe Rogan talks about that on his podcast. Joe Rogan, time. yeah, he's, he's always, always posting elk about shit. about elk about elk. He says elk's like the best meat. It's really good. We like it. Really tender, no? It's man, it, and it's and you know what? It's not real fatty. It's a lean meat, but it's that's why we see that. But it's not. It's it's lean. It doesn't have a lot of fat on it, so it's good, hey, man. Hey, but thank you guys, man. Hey, Bobby, thank you. Alejandro, shit, man. Thank yeah, you nice so meeting much. you guys. You know, thank, thanks for coming on, dude. I, I yeah, really appreciate man. it. I, I know, like I said, it's late, but I appreciate you guys taking the time. And, uh, you know, hopefully this shit ends. I mean, they're talking about we won't be be, be able to hit a stage till 2021. And I'm like, oh, my miss, wait, fuck. Oh. Like, so, you know. No, thanks. Yeah. It's, it's an honor, Cisco. Bobby, nice meeting you. Safe. Yeah, man. I'll check out your special with my wife. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure. Well, you know what? Is it here in the U.S., though? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's here in the U.S. It's here in the U.S. Yes. yes. I'm going to check it out. Get you a VPN, Bobby. Shit. A VPN. <laughs> hey, times are tough, motherfucker. We're trying to save money. <laughs> oh, that, I'm a, hey, dude. That shit's funny. I, I, see, I see you on Twitter always replying to motherfuckers. That shit's funny as fuck, dude. I mean, <laughs> it's, inter, it's entertaining. I'm like, well, that's up? how you do it. Um, I don't know if you know who Talib Kweli is. Talib Kweli, he re, like, replies to everybody. And like, he gets them like, out the paint. It's like, why are, you, why are you screenshotting a tweet without the, the date and the time and the location source? Like, how, that's how I know it's fake. And like, he calls all the bots out. And I was like, dang it, like, this guy's just really good. But I mean, that's ideally what you have to do if you have a big fan base. Like, go well, and interact, yeah. interact with everybody. It's with just it? engagement, yeah. yeah. It's right. engagement. All right, gentlemen. All right, Later, guys. man. Peace out, man. Thank you. All right.